Let's jump right to it. Tell me what is your final four and who wins all of it? Skip, this was really hard because the perennial powerhouses aren't, aren't powerhouses this year. The blue bloods that we normally think of, as Jenny mentioned, Kentucky, Duke, not even in the tournament. Uh, Michigan State, UCLA, other blue bloods play in game. Kansas weren't as strong as they normally are. North Carolina weren't as strong as they normally are. This might be the best chance for a non-Power 5 team to win the national title. And if it is a Power 5 conference, it's probably going to be someone maybe we least expect or someone, Skip, we don't really think as a basketball mm -hmm. program. Yep. So for me, I'm like, I'm shooting in the dark here, Skip, because because uh, a lot of teams, you know, they go weeks without playing. You know, they go went two weeks. I, mean, I think Michigan went like two weeks without even play, playing a game. Yep. I almost had Michigan in my final four bracket, Skip. But the loss is right at the tail end. You can't lose to Michigan State when you're the superior, superior clearly the better team. And then you lost again. Well, they got blown out at home by Illinois. So I'm like, nah, I can't pick you guys. Gonzaga was an easy choice. Gonzaga, Gonzaga, <laughs> the Zags. Uh, <laughs> they've been the best team the entire season. And if you look at their mm -hmm. roster, now I didn't, I didn't know this guy, but Master P, who did my podcast, Skip, he said he mentioned this guy's name. But they start a senior, a redshirt junior, a junior, a sophomore, and a freshman. Now the freshman is point guard Jalen Suggs. Many believe he'll be a top five pick. He will be. If you look at the way they're constructed, you, you see why normally they're always in it somehow because they always have these guys, Skip, that stay two, mm -hmm. three years. Mm -hmm. So instead of playing with an all-freshman-based <laughs> team, they have a couple of uh, uh, seniors and juniors sprinkled in there. Yep. So I have them as one. I'm going to take Illinois. They won 14 of the last 15. They beat Ohio State in overtime to claim the Big Ten title. Mm -hmm. I like they beat Michigan earlier. So I like them. Um, I'm going to take Alabama. I'm gonna take Bama. They're not. They're not a bad. You know. They, you know. Bama. You think Bama? What you think about Saint Nick? Mm. Hey. Well, not only did they win the conference championship in football, Skip, mm -hmm. they did it in basketball the first time since 1991. So I like them to come out of the, uh, the East, and I'm gonna take Ohio State. Okay. Uh, I, I think they mm -hmm. played well. Um, to do what they did against Michigan, and they've been in the top five. They've been flirting, you know, top five, top, and then they lose. They lost like two or three games, but I believe they're ready. So I got Gonzaga, mm -hmm. Illinois, Alabama, Ohio State. Now, the only one that I'm 100% confident in getting to the Final Four is the Zags, mm. but I like my bracket. Okay, and you have which team winning it all? I got the Zags beating the Illini. Okay. <laughs> I concur with you only on your first point. The Zags. No. Oh, you don't like? This oh. tournament. Yes, okay. I have been picking this tournament forever. <laughs> and it gets harder by the year. It does. And this is the hardest year ever because of all the COVID crises mm -hmm. this sport has faced. Gonzaga was down and out for a while with COVID issues. And yet, in all my time watching sports the most aptly, appropriately nicknamed sport in the history of sports is March Madness. <laughs> yeah. It is truly madness. It is the all-time roller coaster ride, often for all the wrong reasons, because it's not even fair that you take a lot of 18- and 19-year-old mm -hmm. kids and you throw them into very strange venues at weird times, can be early or late, and it's just one and done. Yes. And it's a three-point shooting contest yep. from a, a line that's much closer than the NBA line. Yep. And you either make them or you miss them. Mm -hmm. And if you have one bad day where your star is having a fight with his girlfriend or whatever is happening <laughs> off the court, you're, you're going home. Done. <laughs> so that's the, the, the bitter and the sweet of this tournament. Mm -hmm. So I, I just throw it up in the wind and see what comes back down. So I agree with your picks only on one. I agree with Alabama. I think Alabama, from start to finish, looked to me like an even more consistent team to me, to my eye, than Gonzaga looked. Wow. Because uh, Alabama starts two seniors and two sophomores. And in their scoring, it goes Shackelford, Quinterly, Petty Jr., and Jones. They go 14, 13, 12, and 11 points a game. Mm -hmm. So they're incredibly balanced. And... That coach, Nate Oates, I, I think he's on his way to becoming a Roy Williams or maybe even You don't think it's going to be at Alabama long, huh? I, I don't know. I mean, you could build a powerhouse there. It's not like they didn't build a power in football, right? Oh, yeah. <laughs> okay. But they got pedigree. 
And that's Gil. Well, I, I got it, but but he's off to the yeah. races there. And remember, they won nine of their last ten. They won the conference. They won the, the conference tournament. Mm -hmm. And I'm going with Alabama as one of my picks. But out of that league, I'm also going with Arkansas. Because back on February 24th at Arkansas, my man – Moses Moody just did a number on Alabama, and they mm -hmm. won 81 to 66. That was the game of the year for Arkansas, coached by my guy Eric Musselman, who I knew pretty well when he coached the Golden State Warriors. Mm -hmm. I know he's bounced around a little bit, mm -hmm. but he's coaching the heck out of Arkansas. So they're my second team. Then I'm I'm now down to the two players who are vying for Player of the Year. One is going to be the first pick in the draft in Cade Cunningham. And I have watched him a lot this year. Yeah. I probably watched 10 Cade Cunningham games yeah. at Oklahoma State. He's and I'm, a, I'm an Oklahoma guy, but I watched the, the Orange men a lot. I watched him do a number on your Sooners, too. He did. <laughs> a couple of Saturdays he ago. Did. Well, he's done a couple numbers on my Sooners. <laughs> and I, I don't know if I want to go special yet, but, but he's going to be the first pick in the draft. Mm -hmm. And he's getting to where he's just growing up right before your very mm -hmm. eyes where now he's a man among boys and he's just a freshman, right. obviously. Yeah. But he's just taking over games. He can distribute it. He can sh score it from three. He can take it to the rack. And in, in, in games like this, Skip, in a tournament like this, guys, freshmen can take it over. They can. We remember Camelo Anthony. Ooh. We remember Purvis Ellison. Ooh. So we've seen freshmen dominate p dominate this run when you win six games. Yep. And, he, and, and he has that kind of ability that he can take over a game at any given moment. Okay, and I was shocked. They were only a four seed. I'm like, four seed? Are you kidding me? They're just better than that, and they're going to win the Midwest okay. over Illinois. Okay. Then that leaves me one team, and I'm going with the two seed in Gonzaga's region because in the West because I watched a bit of a game played back on December 19th, and it was at sort of a, a COVID protocol site that they had to just set up on the fly in Sioux Falls, South Dakota. It mm -hmm. was Gonzaga's home game against Iowa. Right. Now we're to the other player of the year possibility. Wow. We got a Luca in college basketball. <laughs> and his name Garza. is Luca Garza. So here we go with another Luca. And that night against Gonzaga, he went 30 and 10. He, he goes about 6'11, but he mm -hmm. had 30 points and 10 rebounds. But Jalen Suggs, who I love because he will compete, he's got a lot of refuse to lose mm -hmm. in him. He made seven of ten threes that night. They made 50% of their threes, while Iowa went four for 18 from three. So it was a three-point contest, and Gonzaga ended up running away from them 99 to 88. I believe that will get reversed in the, the regional final. Okay. So I'm going to go with Luca over Gonzaga in the regional final. They'll make a lot more threes, and Gonzaga they won. They better. They're, they better. <laughs> And so that, that leaves my final four then, Arkansas versus Oklahoma State. And I'm going to go Arkansas in that game as much as I like. I, I love Cade Cunningham, but listen, that check out Moses Moody and tell me he can't play. Whew. And then I've got Iowa as a two seed against Alabama, another two seed in the other semifinal. And then I've got Alabama winning it all. What? Got Alabama winning it all over Arkansas. Has that ever happened? A football team that won the same year? <laughs> you heard it here first. I don't know, Skip. I, I think because I think Gonzaga is the most battle-tested of all the teams. They beat Iowa by 11. They beat Kansas by 12. They beat Virginia by 23. Mm -hmm. There are two, three, and four seeds in their prospective brackets. So mm -hmm. I know Gonzaga is battle-tested. Uh, BYU had them down, and they come back in the, in the finals and crush BYU. So I think they're battle-tested. They have enough upperclassmen mm -hmm. sprinkled in with a sensational freshman in order to get the job done. Because when you play freshman-led team, Skip, if I'm an opposing coach, I say, look, all I want to do is get it to the last five minutes of game. I know now if we let them get up and down, their athleticism is better than ours. Mm -hmm. But I want to get them where they have to think and they have to execute in the last five minutes. And we see that. Skip, skip, remember Keller, uh, uh, Coach K in Wisconsin? They got them to the last five minutes of the game. They had all that talent. Carl Anthony Towns, all those guys. Let's see if they can execute the last five minutes. Without letting them get up and down, put them in a half-court set. Well, Gonzaga, yeah, they can rain threes, but put them in a half-court set. They got enough. They got enough experience to get the job done. Somebody's gonna be catch the Dickens, but like you said, on any given night, somebody get hot, you get cold, and it's good night. It's kind of like Georgetown and Creighton. 
Craig couldn't throw it in the ocean. Georgetown couldn't miss. They blew him out. They Congratulations, did. Patrick Ewan. Oh, yeah, I think they, they all know who you are at, at Madison Square Garden, at MSG right now. That was that was a great story. But Skip, normally, you know, Skip, I'll I, I fill out a bracket, and I'm like, I like this. I like this bracket. Do you? Skip, I fill, I fill out my bracket today, and I'm like, mm. Mm, mm. I'm really shooting in the dark on this okay. one. Okay. Well, so how many one seeds? You got one one seed. How many? I don't, see, I don't worry about the one seat. I just want, as long as my Gonzaga win and yours don't, we got two cases on it. <laughs> two cases on, you, you oh, got my, my bracket going to be better than yours. Two cases on the brackets? Whatever you want, however you want to bet it. Who, like, okay, like who you has got, the most final four teams? Okay, then we do that too. Okay, I'm good. Thank you. You don't have none. You, 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 you realize every time you propose a bet on this show, you lose. You let me tell you. Let me tell you what's gonna happen. To you. Let me. Let me tell you by Saturday. No, yep. by Sunday. This is what you're gonna be doing to your bracket. Well, it's highly possible. But I, <laughs> I, I think you might be doing that. No, 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 no. No, as long hey, Skip. All I need is one. The Gonzaga. All mm. I need is them to take me all the way home. Okay. Just remember, I said this. Alabama will get revenge over Arkansas for its one bad loss the whole year, and it was at Arkansas on February 24th, 81 to 66. Alabama is the, the steadiest team I watched all year, even steadier and, and better coached than Gonzaga is. Remember, Gonzaga has never won this thing after all the, the Cinderella stories. This, and this is their, okay. I, Skip, I believe this is their best chance yep. also. Um, if you look, because normally there's always a Duke, there's always a North Carolina, they went up against North Carolina, they lost against North Carolina. Yep. They've always been those, those true blue blood powerhouses that's been remaining that where they would have to go up against. Skip, there aren't any of those guys. And the blue bloods, they got, you know, they got a lot of one and done guys. Mm -hmm. And even some of the one and dones opted out. Some of them got injury, got injured. And so this is it's wide open now. If I'm Mark Field, I'm telling my guys, guys, this is as good a chance as we ever going to have. Right now, let's see I'm this not sure I would tell them that. I'm telling them. This, I, I, I want, yes. Yeah. I want you to know, we got to actually, you know, no Duke. I mean, Carolina's an eight seed. Michigan, Skip, when you ever thought Michigan State and UCLA would be in the play-in game? No, USA, you, UCLA won like 10 of these things. It's flipped on its head. Yes. I agree. But in football, look at Skip. The pop is still there. You got, oh, you had, who did you have? Clemson. Yeah. You had Notre Dame. Yeah. You had Alabama. You had Ohio State. The the powerhouses, even in the COVID shortened season, the powerhouses were still there. Not in basketball. No, nope. not bad. Can you imagine, Skip, a Final Four with no, with no Notre Dame, no Ohio State, no Clemson, no Alabama? No. Agreed. <laughs> so here we go. Thank you for watching. You can subscribe here to get the latest from the show and be sure to check out more of the best clips from Undisputed or go watch a few other segments from our other shows on FS1.